Rockstar really loves adding serial killers into their games and I'm covering them all. GTA 4, GTA 5 and now even Red Dead Redemption 2 all have a minor character with an extreme interest in the forever sleep of other people. Today we'll be looking at the serial killer in Red Dead 2, showing you where all of his victims are, including the implied ones and not just the ones that get shown in the game, and we'll be showing you his shocking attempt at freedom when you do finally capture him. So if the hidden easter eggs and secrets found throughout the Rockstar universe to interest you, then you're right at home because that is all that I do here. Bonus points as well, if you can guess in the comments ahead of time what today's serial killer's weapon of choice is, as I'm betting you're not going to get it. In the early portion of Red Dead Redemption 2, a lot of you probably came across a horrific scene underneath a bridge near Valentine. It's also entirely possible that I'm going to have to blur out most of this because of the graphic in nature of it, uh, but just take my word for it, it's pretty bad. Nearby there's also a statement written essentially directly to the player that says, look at my work. You see, this isn't the only body that you're probably going to find that has been mutilated in this way. You do come across a number of corpses throughout the game that have all been killed and horrifically mutilated by the same person. You see, Red Dead 2 has a serial killer and it becomes your job to find them. Whether you find the body first or you get introduced to Sheriff Curtis Malloy, the game will give you the American Dreams Stranger quest. This quest will not only result in you finding the killer, but this man will make a really really brazen attempt to get away depending on your choices. So the first victim can be found kind of south southwest of Wallace Station and the victim's head can be located on a smaller rock nearby. If you travel east of Braithwaite Manor until you get to the S in Meadows on the map, you'll come across a corpse hanging in a tree and the head of that corpse is behind the tree. I'll also point out that the head can be hard to spot at night. If you travel southwest of Valentine, that's where you find the uh, wooden bridge, and then obviously if you travel underneath that bridge, you will find the um, the one I mentioned earlier, and obviously the words, um, look at my works, get written uh, nearby as well. The head of this victim, though, uh, can be found impaled on a wooden support beam nearby. Now, as that was the victims that actually kind of are part of the quest and get shown in the game, but there's also some implied victims as well. It's heavily implied that this killer is also responsible for the missing persons report in the news newspaper for the Blackwater Athletics team, as it is believed that the B shape that you find in his basement made out of body parts is probably linked to those team members. During the American Dreams quest, you obviously find maps at each of the three victims' locations, and then once you've collected all three, you get directed to the cabin of the actual killer. So, you get directed to Lucky's Cabin, which is southwest of Valentine. If you search outside for a hatch, you can kind of travel inside that into the murderer's kind of like chamber area. You'll come across a letter that he wrote to uh, someone in the first room, and a knife can be interacted with and found in the second room. When you do interact with that knife, uh, he'll come up behind you and knock you out. So, in a very disoriented state, um, you basically get taunted by him a bit. You have to knock him out and hook time and if you wait too long uh, he will torture you to death. So after you escort him to Valentine Jail he will reveal himself to be Edmund Lowry Jr. It's at this point that he attacks the sheriff. If the player saves the sheriff by killing Edmund, you get a $20 reward. If you use the lasso or you do nothing, the sheriff will just kill Edmund himself and won't give you anything. So who is Edmund Lowry Jr.? Well, he's clearly a very sick and twisted individual, kind of out seeking recognition for his work. He's extremely sadistic, preferring to toy and monologue with his victims before violently murdering them, and the evidence that we find in his basement suggests that he tortures people for an extended period of time. There's a missing persons poster that you can find for an Eliza Bloom uh, that's inside of his basement, and it kind of indicates that he enjoys like trophies or things about or related to his victims um, that he kind of takes and stores in, in kind of house. We also know that he's quite narcissistic because in a letter to the editor of a newspaper, he describes himself as a man of great intelligence, power, and no small amount of cunning. This is despite the fact that he's also a bit careless given that he attacks the sheriff as soon as his handcuffs are taken off. And for those of you who did manage to guess, his weapon of choice is a hunting knife. 
It's believed that his character is likely inspired by you know, famous serial killers such as Jack the Ripper uh, and Albert Fish. He could also possibly be a reference to Eddie Lowe, who is an actual serial killer in Grand Theft Auto 4, who I will be covering soon. Some fun facts include that he has an anonymous letter to a newspaper that you can find in his basement, which he essentially asks the, the newspaper to give him more coverage, which kind of points towards the whole idea that he's just out for attention. There is also a weapon available in Red Dead Online called the Lowry's Revolver, which is interesting because he never actually uses one or is seen with one in the game. But otherwise, that pretty much covers it for this character and the serial killer. If you're able to guess the weapon of choice, I'm going to love react your comments. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this one. Definitely check out some of the other videos that we've got. We cover serial killers, some of the weird characters you come across in Red Dead 2 and Grand Theft Auto 5, as well as some of the creepy easter eggs and the little, little details that Rockstar keeps adding into these games. But that'll be it, I'll see you all in the next one.